Hello, welcome to this video where we're going to look at changing from XY Cartesian into a new coordinate system in order to be able to calculate double integrals. So when you're doing a change of variable, what we have to account for is the fact that perhaps the area that you that you have in the one uh, XY plane might not be the same area that you have in the other XY plane. What we're doing officially is mapping from XY Cartesian into a new coordinate system for us it's going to be polar but let's just generically call it UV for now there'll be functions that'll be the, the functions that will give you the U and V um, X is going to be equal to F of UV and Y is going to be equal to G of UV and that will perform the mapping for you it's up to us to figure out then as long as the region is um, has a boundary and the interior will map to the interior and the the, uh, the boundary will map to the boundary but the area might not be preserved okay the area will be multiplied by a factor called the Jacobian the way we calculate the Jacobian is by uh, just a little another memory tool you've seen it before when we did um, calculating the second derivatives and trying to figure out that um, whether you have a local max or local min same kind of action we're going to create a two by two determinant and this matrix, the determinant of this matrix is going to be the Jacobian. What we're going to do is we have this function x, and it's a function of u and v. We're going to take its u partial, and then we're going to take its v partial. That's row 1. Then we're going to take y, who is a function of u and v, g. We're going to take its u partial and take its v partial. And then that, that fills up the matrix, row 1 and row 2. And then we calculate the determinant, 2 by 2 determinant, so it's going to be the partial of x with respect to u times the partial of y with respect to v minus the partial of x with respect to v times the partial of y with respect to u. It's best just to set it up like that instead of memorizing the formula and whatever comes out of it. It might be a constant. It might be a function that has u's and v's in it. Whatever it is, your element of area, which used to be dy dx or dx dy, now gets changed into a new element of area doesn't directly go to du dv or dv du it gets multiplied by this factor called the Jacobian say the Jacobian 7 so then the area in XY's Cartesian world gets mapped to a new area that's seven times as you know magnified by a factor of seven or, or the other way around it could be you know one over four then it could be condensed by a factor of four it could be that the Jacobian is actually a function of u and v so it could be multiplied by that function so you have to account for the Jacobian. These bars that are around the Jacobian, they're there so that um, they can account for uh, maybe perhaps it could be negative. We don't want negative. And so those those bars there are absolute value bars. Now, you can't always do this. There's, there's some things that need to be true before you can do this. The functions f and g, which give you the transformation, they have to be continuous. They have to have first partials that you can use to find the Jacobian. Um, the mapping needs to be one to one. It needs to be one that you can um, invert and be able to map backwards from UV world back into XY world. And that, that reverse um, transformation will have its own Jacobian as well. These regions R and S, they need to consist of, maybe, maybe they won't be smooth themselves, but at least if they consist of piecewise, smooth, simple, closed curve and the interior. Um, Jacobian can't be zero. And if so, then what you do is you replace all your X's and Y's with the function F and the function G. And then you replace dA or dx dy or dy dx with the Jacobian, absolute value of the Jacobian, times du dv. All right, so I say all this to say that when we're switching into polar, we're going to calculate the fact that dx dy or dy dx just don't get converted into dr d theta. Okay. Um, there's a whole section coming after this where we just generically change from xy world into uv world. That's called... Um, change a variable or I like to call it uh, UV sub it's like U sub but multivariable U sub so I call it UV sub and so um, but let's let's focus on um, let's focus on the uh, polar coordinates for a second just a quick quick review of polar coordinates so um, we're gonna have a point in the XY plane and that point is you know has coordinates X and Y the distance you move horizontally is X the distance you move vertically is Y Okay, and what we're going to do is connect that point to the origin and call that distance R. That'll be the radial distance out from the origin. It makes a right triangle. 
um, there's an angle that's made at the base there at the origin that angle we're gonna call theta so theta is the angle that's made by the point by by the um, the radius that goes from the origin out to that point and um, and with with the positive uh, uh, x-axis so so your new point won't have the same coordinates your new point instead of being called xy is going to be called r theta there's connecting equations that we need to know and we'll just use trig um, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so it's x over r solving that we need x equals formulas and so we can multiply both sides by r we'll have x is r cosine theta uh, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse so sine of theta is going to be y over r we need a y equals formula so we multiply by r we get the fact that y is equal to r sine theta um, but that can theorem leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared so x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared and then finally the last equation connecting theta to x and y um, without using r it's going to be that tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent so tangent of theta is y over x these are your connecting equations for polar you can switch back and forth with these equations we're going to use the two that are in the box the first two x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta to be able to calculate the jacobian when we switch into polar all right great let's do it on the next slide here so we're converting into polar we have these two equations and the jacobian says that it's our job to take partial derivatives of this guy once with respect to r and then once with respect to theta we'll make a matrix out of this so what is the partial derivative of x with respect to r just cosine theta the partial derivative of x with respect to theta is going to be negative r sine theta then we move to y go to the next row the partial derivative of y with respect to r just sine theta and the partial derivative of y with respect to theta r cosine theta we throw these guys in a matrix and we'll be calculating the determinant of that matrix and what we get is r cosine squared minus a negative r sine squared or plus and then we could factor out the r and have cosine squared plus sine squared and so what it the, the point is that the jacobian is equal to r in the formula for the integral we change all the x's by replacing x by r cosine theta change all the y's by replacing y by r sine theta when it comes to dx dy or dy dx we're going to convert that to be r drd theta r drd theta please don't forget the r very important all right so your double integral who's in terms of x and y can now be written as a double integral in terms of r and theta and the reason why you would want to do this is because your region in the xy plane is circular in nature okay all right great and so um here's an example of two polar curves okay if you can i want you to um review polar graphing there's polar curves that we need to know how to graph and so um the blue is a circle it's r equals one uh the red not all of it's there but that's called a cardioid it's a r equals one minus cosine theta and uh, we're going to do this question later i want i just want you to see how drd theta works with this slide drd theta works the following way you um remember how we have dy dx and dx dy well we have drd theta as well we put circles on the ends remember what they're for that help us figure out what the upper limit inside is and the lower limit inside is and then we swing um so we we go radially outward from the origin find out the endpoints there most times it's the origin for the lower limit but sometimes it's not and then we rotate that in the direction of increasing theta that's how drd theta works okay um, you start with the theta um, equals a you end with the theta equals b in this case it'd be theta equals zero and we end at theta equals pi over two okay there's an outside function that's the one that we call r equals one and there's an inside function that's the one that actually ends up as um, one minus cosine theta for this example we'll get to this example later but your double integral of your function of x and y over the region r you can't do this in dx and dy so you trade it in 
and you replace all your X's with R cosine theta, replace all your Y's with R sine theta, and replace DA with R dr d theta. Okay? All right, great. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to go over a bunch of examples. <coughs> My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Um, I am here to help you through this journey. Please reach out to me if you need any help. Uh, comment down below, like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.